The nice thing about this meeting is that we're all here for the same purpose. We all want to improve proteins or find new proteins for different applications. My name is Maria Lucas and I am CEO and co-founder at Zymbo and I'm going to tell you now in the next 20 minutes what we have been doing with data to boost in silico enzyme design. When we're trying to look for a biochemical transformation, often we're found with a situation we find ourselves in a situation where we have an enzyme that has some activity, but it's still not appropriate for the application that we're looking for. In this particular case, one of the most successful techniques definitely involves using bioinformatics, where we look for mutations in other proteins that can guide us in the engineering efforts. This is particularly interesting if we have some flexibility and even though we have a particular goal in mind, we can still live with maybe an enzyme that's a little bit less active or, or, or not as specific. The problem normally comes when we really want a big change. So if we need a, a large improvement in our enzymes properties, then normally bioinformatics is not the right tool for us. In that case, we're probably better off doing directed evolution. So as we all know, this is an expensive and, and, and time-consuming approach. However, it is well known that it often leads to ex excellent results. However, there's still a third scenario, which is we're actually looking for new chemistry. And in this case, of course, either of these techniques have large limitations. If we're looking for inspiration in nature, it's going to be very difficult to find ideas because enzymes have been improved for other reactions, which is the, not the one that we're looking for. On the other hand, directed evolution has one basic requirement, which is you need to have at least some residual activity to start your campaign. So what I'm going to show you next is how we solve this problem by basically doing in silico enzyme engineering. At our company, we use 3D models, realistic 3D models with physics-based methodologies to actually engineer enzymes. And what are we doing? So we need to first understand what are the amino acids that we actually need in the active site. Then the next thing we need to see is, is the active site actually large enough for this new entity? Is there enough space? Can, can we create the space if needed? And then, of course, we need to make sure if the substrate is able to access the active site and the product needs to leave the active site. The next thing we need to do is identify hotspots. So which residues need to be modified in order to actually achieve the type of chemistry that we want or the type of improvement that we need? In this case, we are looking at re residues in the active site, the access to the active site, of course, and in any other part of the protein, which is one of the basics uh, which I'm going to be ta talking to you in a, in a, in a few minutes. Um, the next step is mutagenesis. So I'm showing here an example of a video of what our simulations look like. So we start with the substrate in the surface of the protein. We see how it reaches the active site. Then finally, of course, we understand how it's interacting in the active site and we pick mutations. So the mutations, the hotspots are selected pretty much anywhere in the protein structure, as you can see here. The next thing, of course, is mutagenesis. Currently, we are able to mu mutate millions of enzyme variants per day. And this is the strength of our, of our technique because we're basically combining the strength of random mutagenesis of directed evolution with an approach that then is of course based on rational design, which is we need to understand what's going on. The next step is ranking. So once we have these millions of enzyme variants created, we need to now select, of course, the best ones. And for this, we have a funnel that includes an initial screening with lower level uh, computational methods like bioinformatics and molecular modeling using an implicit solvent. And of course, then we start selecting the best variants, the best hundreds of thousands of variants, and we take it to higher levels of theory, which include from molecular modeling with explicit solvent to quantum mechanics. Now. We have been able to do this, so our, our in silico enzyme engineering, for many properties. We have been able to improve activity, we have been able to improve selectivity and specificity. We have even been able to invert the, the standard reaction, so basically change the thermodynamic equilibrium. And in, a, in every single situation, what we're always dealing with is understanding what is happening in the active site, what is happening between the protein and the substrate, and what we need to improve to actually achieve the, the goal of the engineering campaign. So of course, we're always looking for computational indicators that we can correlate with activity. 
Now, this is one of the limitations we have today because, of course, we basically depend on chemical intuition, okay? So we need to have a good starting hypothesis to actually be able to engineer the enzyme. Now, what we're working on today is trying to remove part of this human dependence and have data work working for us. And this is what I'm going to be telling you next. Okay. So we have taken data from a gene site saturation mutagenesis, which you can see here. This is a small protein. It, it, it's actually an eczema, if I'm not mistaken. So it's, it's quite large, but the, the basic unit is, is fairly small. And what you see here is data for uh, saturated mutagenesis in every single amino acid position. So the data that is shown in yellow or, or white basically means activity similar to, to the wild type. Um, the data in blue are variants with, imp with, with um, in decreased properties, and in red, they're improved variants, okay? Then, of course, what we do first is look at how the substrate is interacting with the protein. So you can see here on the right side an image where you can see the substrate in green in the active site. So what we're trying to do here is try to replicate this data with using machine learning. So we have used 80% of the data as a training set and then we have used 20% as a validation test. Um, the results I'm going to show you next are, the, are, are blind tests carried out on residue number 50, which as you can see here uh, shows also improved uh, properties. Okay, So you can see here the results on the right side, the experimental data on the on the left are predicted um, results. And as you can see, we have been able to predict the two best improvements. OK, however, we still have limitations, which, have, as you can see here, we are also predicting mutations that are indeed not good through our simulations. So obviously, there's still room for improvement. But one of the things that we are doing very well is identifying mutations that do not lead to improvement. So we are already selecting a large number of variants that, let's say, it's not worth testing in the lab. Currently, we are expanding this knowledge and we're now applying uh, machine learning to improve the dehydrogenase and this work is, do is being done with Aminoverse, a young company also that is, of course, uh, many of you probably already know and we're very happy to begin this collaboration with them. The, most of the research will be done under um, this European project that we received last year and, and we hope that in our next meeting we will be able to show you some results from it. So I've just showed you what we're doing more recently to predict hotspots away from the active site, but we have been predicting hotspots already for a long time. And the way we were doing this was actually by using a protein network analysis, where we're actually looking at how residues away from the active site actually propagate changes to the active site. And we have done this for, for, several, for several, several engineering programs, and we have seen that indeed we are able to predict long range mutations. So we believe that now, between the combination of network analysis and the machine learning that we are developing more recently, we believe that this is going to be a real important improvement in our ability to predict mutations away from the active site. So how can we help? Well, if gene site saturated mutagenesis is your tool of preference to engineer enzymes, one of the things we can definitely do for you is reduce the number of site a number of sites that you actually need to mutate because as you've seen we are able to predict accurately mutations so we are able to predict which sites will lead to an improvement in activity we still need to work on identifying exactly which mutation is the best one but we're, we're really good at is predicting variants or positions where, acti where improvement in activity will not take place. So we're definitely able to reduce the number of sites that you need to test in the lab to do a gene site saturated mutagenesis uh, campaign. So until now, I've showed you some of the results related with our, our most recent uh, machine learning advances. And I've also showed you how we are able to predict hotspots away from the active site. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you, and, and it's going to be the final part of my presentation, is what happens when we're actually looking uh, for a, conver a conversion, but we don't even know of any enzyme that is able to do anything like that. Okay, so we're looking for a new enzyme. We, we don't know the enzyme to start with. So in this case, what I'm going to show you next is how we are discovering new enzymes for industrial applications using a software that we have recently uh, um, registered called Biomatchmaker. 
So Bio Matchmaker is a slightly different pipeline from, from, from our Zyme Evolver. And as you can see, the first thing we need to do is select the starting scaffolds, okay? Select the starting scaffolds. And in this case, we begin, of course, with sequence information, and we try to cluster these sequences based on uh, similarity between the sequences of mm, in, taking into consideration specific characteristics, okay? So naturally, we, the way we're searching for these sequences has to do with the kind of act, active site that we need to have for the chemistry that we're interested in. Once we have created these clusters, we then create structural models for each one of these clusters, and the next step includes, of course, studying the interaction between the prote protein and the substrate in the active site. And this is done, of course, for all the clusters that have been selected in step one. Finally, just as, as I'm Evolver, the next step in, in, involves ranking. So we need to select which are the very, sorry, which are the proteins that we believe are most appropriate for the target chemistry that we're looking for. I would like also to mention at this stage that this is a software that we have developed to be used internally. So we're only providing this as a service and it's not a software that we are licensing. And now I'm going to show you the results of our proof of concept. So this work was done using a dehydrogenase, and what we have done here was uh, we were doing this work for a customer, and the customer was interested in five dis different uh, chemical conversions that were, of course, non-natural conversions, and for which no, no, no known enzyme uh, was available. So what we have done is use our biomatchmaker to, well, at that time it wasn't called biomatchmaker, but to use our enzyme search uh, strategy to find new enzymes. We selected 16 enzymes for these five conversions and we send them to the lab. And from these conversions, as you can see here, we have been able to find activity in all enzymes for at least one small molecule. And in particular, enzyme number five and enzyme number six actually have activity for all five small molecules. So if you look at this map here, you can see the sequence similarity between the 16 enzymes that were tested in the lab. As you can see, we have some enzymes that are fairly similar, but we also have very distinct enzymes. And, and this gives you an idea of just how different these clusters of enzymes are to start with. Furthermore, out of the enzymes that we have found with activity, we have a large range of different temp optimum temperatures, which means that we can actually select the best enzyme for the different temperature, the, the, the specific temperature needs that we have in our process. So, our proof of concept, as you can see, we have tested 16 enzymes and we have two enzymes that are actually active in all substrates. And finally, in the last few minutes, I want to tell you a little about who are we and what we're doing. I've just tell, told you what we have been doing until now, but I also wanted to share with you a little bit of what we're planning to do for the future. So. We're a young company, we're based in Barcelona, Spain. As you can see here, this is a, a part of the team because of course this picture was, was, was taken at the end of last year. So we were founded in 2017 with three co-founders co and we're happy to say that almost four years later, we still remain privately funded. Um, this is our track record. So as you can see, we are operating with multiple companies here in Europe, but we are also working out outside Europe, for instance, in the United States, Brazil and South Korea. One of the things that we are particularly proud of is that we work with different industries. So we're not serving only pharmaceutical industry, but we also have among our customers companies from the chemical industry, flavor and fragrances, biotech, uh, animal feed, food. So the nice thing about our technology is that it, it really can be used in pretty much any application in any industry. I also am happy to say that this year we have already received certification for ISO 9001 and ISO 20, 27001. Until now, um, we have been working, and, and this is something that I wanted to mention, is we have been working truly in, in, the, in the direction of trying to make sophisticated computer simulations available to an industry. And I've just showed you that indeed we are working with multiple industries. And very luckily or very happily, I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, this year I was selected as one of the winners of the Women Innovators Prize uh, provided by the European Commission precisely for our work in trying to democratize the use of green chemistry. So what are we planning to do next? Um, as I've mentioned, we are now able to also find enzymes 
um, through our tool, through our, through our, our biomatchmaker tool that complements the Zyme Evolver that allows us to do engineering. So right now we already have a set of enzymes that is ready to be tested for, by our customers and which we can also, um, let's say, repeat these simulations to do a custom kit for, for your particular application. So we're doing this together with Aminiverse. So if you're looking for dehydrogenases, please talk with us. And on the other hand, and this is quite a shift in our company, what we're trying to do now is move from a service-based company to a, an actual product-based or license-based company. So what we're trying to do is find new um, conversions, new enzymes for applications that are of interest for the industry. So if you're looking for, for a new enzyme and you're interested in partnering, partnering with us, we would be more than happy to talk with you because what we're looking for now, what we're looking for right now is precisely new developments with, uh, with our customers and also with new customers to basically continue developing better biocatalysts. So um, this is my last slide. Um, as you can see, we, we have a clear goal. We, we really want to be your enzyme solution provider. And one of the things that we've done very recently, which we believe that can also help industries that are often less accustomed to have biocatalysis bio in their processes, we have recently published a, a, a book chapter um, in this book called Applied Biocatalysis, where we've basically done a survey of the current um, bioservice and, and enzyme service providers. So if you're looking for an enzymatic conversion and you're not entirely sure if it's available or if you actually need to do something more sophisticated, I advise you to, to actually start from this book and try to see who's already producing maybe an enzyme in this field and, and that can actually help you. And with this I end, I thank you very much for your time and I'm open of course to any questions you might have. Thank you.